Now then, a friend of mine, Lee Rose, popped round a couple of weeks ago with a Solis grid inverter. And we had it apart. And because there was two of us there, we could, and because of the nature of the way it's wired up, we were able to watch the relays after having taken the covers off whilst it was trying to start. Yeah, and we I worked out why it was constantly going for initialization and then trying to start and then going back to initialization. So we were able to work on it live and I've worked out a further what's the word now? feature, shall we say, of the these relays which are used on the Aurora inverters also and uh, you get a situation where these actually click but don't seem to work yeah, and I came across this in a solar river inverter that I fixed oh, quite a long time ago now but the covers of those uh, relays on the solar river came off easily whereas these ones you've got to cut them off because they're really glued on hard yeah. Anyway, bottom line is I worked out why people replace the relays when it's not necessary and also why some of the pins burn. Okay, so let's zoom down. I've got a, got a few here on the bench and we're going to do a test. Okay. Okay, first of all the relays four pins yeah so there we go and if we get turn over the two pins at this end that are close together are not the relay contacts they are the coil okay and the relay contacts one is there which goes to this and then across and that is the moving contact and the other one is there which is a fixed contact I'm going to try and zoom right down on this so you can see exactly what's going on okay here we go you can see the moving contact and just in there you can see that other contact just in the back there just down there so these two this one moves making contact with the one at the back so it's got to be a good solid contact and just here that there is a solid lump of metal and that is the coil of the relay so that creates a, an electromagnet that pulls this big lump of steel that way Okay, and the, the contact itself comes from the pin up here and round there but you see this piece of metal is riveted onto there because it's a spring it's got a, it's a flat spring and therefore it allows some flexibility to this whole mechanism hopefully that makes sense the moving contact and the fixed contact so we've got a 12 volt battery here and from the positive we're going to one of the terminals of this um, I think it's a 50 watt 12 volts light bulb Mind your eyes. Okay, so that's quite a load. That's, um, oh, 12s into 50. Yeah, four 12s are 48. So it's a four amp load. Okay, so I'm just going to put it to one side. Right, we've got this relay. So let's go. The load wants to be across the contacts. OK, 
Okay, then we need to power the coil. Listen, you can hear it, the contacts moving, but nothing's happening. I'll tell you what we'll do. We will turn this over. Okay, I've got the bulb just off camera. So we can see the contacts moving, but nothing's happening. So to reenact what uh, I did on that video was I put a screwdriver down there and pushed the contact like that. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to adjust these contacts. Hopefully that makes sense. So it's switched off. So what I propose to do is put a screwdriver between the moving arm and the solenoid core and just twist the screwdriver. Okay, so now manually operating this it works but I don't think it's now it's not quite enough because there needs to be there right what we want is that to come together and then another bit I don't think you'll better see that with that light so I'm going to switch the light off and zoom in to that yeah. comes together yeah, and then it moves a bit more as this very strong magnet pulls this piece so it forces those those relays those contacts goes together and then it really pushes okay let's um zoom out that's there oh right okay put that back on there okay so there we go you get the idea that Where are we? That's the my that's the solenoid core, right? Where are we? We want something else. That's the fixed contact. Okay, so this goes pulls in the core the, the solenoid energizers, it pulls in and effectively bends that flexible spring just to force those contacts together so you've got to have that extra bit of movement we've fixed it so there you go fixed we've adjusted the moving contact arm so that when the coil is energized there is a lot of side force on those that pair of contacts so it really holds together hard and I'm sure that the fact that the contacts were only just making, you'd be getting arcing and heat build up and burning. You'd get the heat transferring down the uh, fixed contact leg into the solder joint. Of course, there are other reasons why um, inverters start to pack up. Of course, one of them is over temperature. 
Now, if the inverter is fitted in the loft or somewhere where there's not enough ventilation and it gets hot, and on a hot day, the sun is blaring down, you've got the roof covered in solar panels and the inverter's in the loft, you know, we could be up to 50 degrees C in the loft. Yeah, and then you've got this poor electronics trying to work in that sort of temperature. So what happens is it goes, oh, I'm too hot and I switch off. And of course, you've got full current, full DC current going through these contacts. And as it switches off, it goes and burns the face of the contact. OK, you get away with it and you get away with it and get away with it. But slowly that gap yeah, between the contact um, increases. And we saw it there. So, you know, uh, I've done a video about how to extend your inverter life and there's all sorts of little bits of tips there, including putting extra external fans on your inverter run on a time switch. You've got to keep them cool. Yeah? And a, a lot of them, they've got an internal fan, but that's not enough because the whole enclosure is sealed. You want an external fan that comes on during the middle of the day just to blow cooling air up the back of the inverter yeah. keep it keep the inverter cool and it will last you a long time allow it to get hot and five years and it's toast and you're buying another one and you think okay so I'm running a fan Whoa, won't that cost a lot of money we're talking about a little computer fan or a snail fan out of a um, uh, fan assisted oven and you're generating electricity so we're talking sort of 5 watts 10 watts so it's nothing and, and if it extends your inverter life by 10 years then it's brilliant isn't it so check out the video the link is at the end of this video cheers for now